Have you ever wanted to factor a number, but brute force wasn't cutting it for you? Have you ever known for certain that a number was composite, but just couldn't find its decomposition? Well, you're in luck, because today I'm going to show you Pollard's row factoring algorithm, which is going to help you factor your integers in no time at all. Although, strictly speaking, it is O n to the 1 quarter. Alright, so first I'm going to explain how the algorithm works, and then I'm going to explain why it works. The first part where I explain how it works is going to be kind of like magic. I'm just going to tell you the steps that the algorithm goes through. So, we have a number n. It's a pretty big integer, and we know it's not prime because we view something like the miller rabin primality test. You can watch a video I made about it up there. Anyways, we know that n is not prime, so it must be composite. Or it's 1, but that's a pretty trivial case. So we know n is the product of some factors, and we want to find one of those factors. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to define a polynomial g of x equals x squared plus 1 mod n. So g takes in an integer x, it squares it, it adds 1, and it takes the remainder when that number is divided by n. Next, we're going to set an initial value, x0 is 2. This is an arbitrary value, we could choose anything we wanted to. Then we're going to generate a sequence, xi, defined as xi equals g of xi minus 1. So the sequence looks like 2, g of 2, g of g of 2, g of g of g of 2, and so on. In general, x of i equals g applied i times to x0. We can visualize this sequence as a series of dots where the next dot is just g applied to the previous dot. An important note is that since there are only n unique values that the terms in the sequence can take on since we're doing everything mod n, and every term only depends on the term before it, eventually we will have to come back to a number that has already appeared in the sequence. At that point, the sequence will start to cycle. Notice how, as I've drawn it, the shape of the sequence kind of looks like the Greek letter rho. For the third step, we're going to define two numbers that are going to change as we iterate through this algorithm. They're called tortoise and hare. Tortoise starts out at x0, and hare also starts out at x0. Every step we move tortoise forward by one term in the sequence, and we move hare forward by two terms in this sequence. So as a visual aid, I will bring out a tortoise and a hare. They both start out at x0. After the first iteration, the tortoise has moved to x1, while the hare has moved to x2. After the next iteration, the tortoise has moved to x2, while the hare has moved to x4. And after the next one, the tortoise will be at x3, while the hare is at x6, and so on and so forth. At every step, we're going to do a check. We're going to check if the greatest common divisor of t minus h and n is greater than 1. Now, there are two cases. The first case is that t equals h, but this just gives us that gcd of 0 and n equals n, which is indeed greater than 1. This gives us no helpful information. The other case is that they're not equal, and since d is the greatest common divisor of n, d is a factor of n, but it's not 1 and it's not n, which means that we found a factor of n and we're done. I mean, the other possibility is that d equals 1, um, in which case we just keep going. Since the tortoise and hare will inevitably end up on the cycle, eventually the hare is going to lap the tortoise and they're going to end up at the same place on the cycle. So we know that if the tortoise and hare don't meet up first, then this will be true. One of these two first possibilities must eventually happen, and the central claim is that the first one is unlikely, and the second, if it happens, happens quickly. In other words, it takes very few iterations relative to n to end up at the second possibility. And now I'll explain why the algorithm works. So at the end of the algorithm, we've obtained a number d that divides n, where d is not 1. Either d equals n, or d does not equal n. If d equals n, then we haven't really learned anything, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this original polynomial, g of x is x squared plus 1, and instead make it like x squared plus 2 or something. We can also change the starting value for the sequence, so instead of having it be 2, we can make it be 3, or 5, or any number that is less than n. Once we do that, we'll just start the algorithm, cross our fingers, and hope we get a value of d that is actually helpful. So we have a value of d. Let's consider a new sequence, which is just the original sequence, but modded by d. And eventually, this sequence is going to cycle 2, because it only has d unique values that the terms in the sequence can take on. It's kind of like the original sequence, but now there's only d unique values instead of n. So the maximum length of the cycle is at most d. Now recall the stop condition of our algorithm. It tests whether the GCD of the tortoise minus the hare and n is greater than 1. This number equals d. So what we're really checking for is if t is congruent to h mod d because this would mean that t minus h is a multiple of d. And if this is true, it means that the tortoise and the hare are at the same place on this new sequence, because everything has been modded out by d. So what our stop condition is really checking for is if the tortoise and the hare are at the same place on this new graph. Okay, now let's take a step back and look at the expected size of this cycle. The values in both the original sequence and the sequence mod d can be modeled as sort of pseudo-random numbers. They're not really random because eventually they cycle, but we can sort of treat them as random numbers. Let's say there are a total of n unique values that the terms in the sequence can take on. Then I claim that the expected number of terms before the sequence repeats is O root n. Now showing this requires a bit of statistics, but essentially the idea is that 
if you want k different numbers and you only have n to choose from, then you have n choose k different ways to choose those numbers. But in total, if these numbers were random, there would be a total of n to the k possibilities for these k different numbers. So this is the probability that all of these k numbers are distinct. As k gets bigger, this number gets smaller and smaller because n to the k grows exponentially, while n choose k grows like binomially. This is not very rigorous, but essentially what this means is that as you get further into the sequence, it's harder to not repeat, and therefore the sequence will repeat pretty soon. Now what this means is that the original sequence mod d is going to cycle on average before o of root d steps, while the original sequence is going to cycle before o of root n steps. So on average, the tortoise and the hare will end up at the same place on this new sequence, which means we hit the second outcome of the stop condition instead of the first one, which means we found a non-trivial factor of n. The algorithm fails when the length of the cycle on the original sequence is equal to the length of the cycle on the mod d sequence because that means the tortoise and the hare will end up at the same place at the same time on both sequences. But in that case, as I described, we'll just restart with a different polynomial or a different starting value. So I wrote some code to implement this, and I also wrote a little benchmark down here. We can run it. And we can see that it takes on average less than a second for factoring 48-bit integers. If we wanted to factor bigger numbers, we'd have to use more advanced techniques like the general number field sieve. But for now, Pollard's row algorithm is pretty good, and it's way better than brute force division. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.